Hi guys and welcome to my channel. So today I'm basically just going to talk about um, my flying career I suppose and like where my flying is going and how much I've done so far. So when I was 13 I had my first ever flying lesson which was a trial lesson where I got in the plane with an instructor and we just flew around. Um, sorry for the noise outside. Fucking people outside. So yeah, when I was 13, I went up in a plane with an instructor and we basically did a trial lesson. So this is basically where they'll fly you around. Um, I had small goes in the controls, like I basically, he taught me the basics of flying. Um, and I had a little go, but it was mainly just him flying and me just enjoying it, taking in the scenery, getting a feel for it and seeing if I really liked it or not, which was the initial purpose of my trial lesson. So basically, that is not the purpose of all the trial lessons. Some trial lessons, people just go, just to have the experience and just to go up flying in a little plane. However, for me, it was to decide whether I wanted to do my PPL, which is my private pilot's license or not. So basically, I did my trial lesson, come back, and I absolutely loved it. And from that moment, I knew that was something I wanted to do. <laughs> <coughs> Can I not just stop sneezing? From that moment, yeah, I knew that was something that I wanted to do, and I knew it was something I wanted to take further. At that stage, I didn't necessarily think commercially. I knew I wanted to just at least do my private pilot's license and take and complete my PPL. So then, we sat down with my um, with some flying instructors at the, my local flying club at Bristol International Airport. Um, it's called the Bristol Wessex Flying Club. So we sat down there, and we I discussed with a few of the instructors about like you know I wanted to start my PPL. What are my options? There was multiple different um, licenses I could do, which was one was the light aircraft pilot license, and one was the private pilot license. Yeah, I went for the private pilot license, um, and then basically there was talked me through you know all the different books that I will need to purchase the different exams I will need to take the different um, things that I will be doing in the aircraft so there's like a list of all the different things that I would do in the aircraft and would learn to do before my PPL test they explained you know how my final test would work how I needed to get my class 2 medical um, and then my class if I wanted to go commercial um, and all those different things and then I decided and then they told me also, sorry, that on my 14th birthday would be, from then, is when my hours could start building towards my PPL. So up until your 14th birthday, you can fly as many times as you want, but your hours will not start building up towards your PPL until your 14th birthday. So I didn't have any more lessons. I um, started buying the books and started having a reading through. And I basically, on my 14th birthday, I booked a flying lesson. From then on, I've done multiple flying lessons um, with my with a few different instructors, actually. Uh, one of my instructors, in a, he did fly for EasyJet. Um, and then he was an instructor at my flying school, so I was with him for quite a while. And then he went on to be a private pilot. Um, and then I have, now have a lady called Lavinia, um, who I've been flying with for a few years now. Um, so I'm actually now with Lavinia, she's got me up to the stage of going solo. I'm just waiting for my class one medical, which is why I've got to have my operation on the 29th to sort my eyes out to pass my class one medical. The reason I went for a class one medical instead of a class two is purely because I want to go commercial, so I thought I might as well just get the class one and then that class is for both, so I can do my private license on that and my commercial license on that, so I might as well just do the class one. Yeah, so I've got to the stage of going solo, so now I'm basically just waiting to complete my class one medical before I can go solo. I also have done some navigation, which is past your the point of doing your first solo, but she's and my, me and Lavinia have done um, navigation together just so I can get used to it, you know, get used to route planning and sorting all these different things out. We've done a lot of practicing on, you know, like emergency landings, like getting lost, um, like refinding where you are using your maps navigation and all kind of navigation things which we've done so now i'm basically just waiting to go solo that is my um where i'm at with my ppl now currently um earlier this year i think it was march or april i actually went up to cae oxford aviation academy in oxford um to one of their open uh, days where you get to you have a meeting about you know becoming a commercial pilot there you know, like, all, um, all about different commercial pilots, different companies, like the money they make, how much it costs for the training, the different types of training, where you do your training, how long your training takes, what kind of exams it entails, and basically you just have the information there about everything that you needed to know in Oxford. And from that moment, I knew, like, it sounds really weird, but from that day, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a first commercial pilot. I was partway through my first year of A-levels, and so I thought... And I have thought since I wanted to start being a commercial pilot from like the age of 14 when I started my PPL 
that um, I had to finish my A-levels before I would even be able to start at Oxford. Um, on that day of the information day, um, I was actually told that no, I didn't have to do A-levels, I could drop the A-levels and start at Oxford when I was 18. So, it was April, um, practically straight away as the lady at the information evening told me that I could drop out of A-levels, I did. I can Literally the next week I dropped out of A-levels, A-levels were finished. That was it. So then I basically had to revise for my entry exams and entry interview into Oxford. So that was a couple of months worth of revision for exams. So we went up to Oxford. Um, I stayed in a hotel overnight. I was stressing all night. It was probably one of the longest nights of my life, honestly. Like, just stressing about revision the whole night. I didn't get a lot of sleep. Um, got a bright and early, did some more revision. And then we went to Oxford Aviation Academy where I sat my... Um, entry exams um we had maths exams we had physics exams and um it's called fast if i remember rightly where like it's just different tests like um you've got to like fly a plane on a, like a simulator you've got to do some other like coordination tests and all different things to see if you can get into oxford so i did those after months and months of revision and i passed I then went back to Bristol, I think it was a week or two later, I just received an email out of the blue um, saying that I'd passed, that was like the best news ever. I then had to go into my stage three entry into Oxford, which is the interview. So then I did um, some interview prep and I had my interview back in September of this year, oh, well, last year now, sorry, back in September 2018. And I had to go up to Oxford again, stayed in a hotel, another long night of stressing about everything. Um, went in the academy. We all sat in like a room. We were just all talking for a while because the interview with process was the whole day. Um, met someone called Honor who was also doing exactly the same course as me, integrated ATPL. Um, and she had her interview first, then I had mine, and then we met each other a couple of weeks later. And we actually had both got in, so we both did pass our interviews as well. And we were now both free to start at Oxford. This was when I had to go and get my class one medical because some of the people, like Honor included, had already got her class class one medical, but I hadn't done mine. So I went to do my class one medical, which is when they found out about my eye problems, and so. It kind of brings us to now, really. Basically, I wasn't allowed to have my class one medical certificate until I sorted my eyes out. Um, and so I went and had a specialist eye appointment where they told me I'd have to have my um, eyes operated and basically sorted out because I have a disease called keratoconus. Um, so keratoconus is basically a disease where my eye changes shape so that my vision slowly deteriorates. Um, but I'll go into more detail of that in like another video Just explaining like what I've got, what the procedure is and stuff like that Yeah, um, that's kind of where I am at now to be honest So I passed my entry exam into Oxford, I passed my interview I'm actually free to go to Oxford and start training now However, I can't because I don't have my class 1 medical I was actually meant to start in Oxford in three weeks time Um, which is really annoying to be fair it's quite upsetting, but what can you do? So I've got to wait um, possibly another year until 2020 to then start Oxford now because of my eyes, which might mean I have to retake my entry exam, so a couple more months of revision. I might have to redo my interview. Um, but you know, being cross pilot sometimes wanting to do something like 13, 14, and so I am going to do it. So I'm just going to have to redo it and redo whatever it takes to get in and get back up to Oxford again. My course at Oxford that I will am. Um, I'm doing slash was doing was going to do sorry um is a integrated ATPL um which I'm also going to explain like in another video kind of what course I was going to do um you know what airlines options I had kind of and all the different courses I could have chose what course I did chose and kind of what that is going to lead to me having to do that's like it's going to be another the, um, video that I'm going to do on here, like what is an integrated ATPL. If you enjoyed this video, if you did, please leave a like and comment down below. If you, you know, anything to do with anything, basically, comment down below, you know, if you're a private pilot now, maybe, or a commercial pilot, or you're interested in being a pilot, or you're looking into it. Um, and yeah, so I'll see you soon for another video.